Okay, thanks for being here despite the good weather outside and just by lunch. We made it quick. <laughs> so before the break, we arrived at the conclusion that the elliptic genus of a string obtained from wrapping a free brain on the base of an elliptic vibration in presence of the one flux has distinct modular properties. It can be written as the sum of two terms. The first term is some quasi modular Jacobi form, a term which doesn't exist in the band literature, but, but, but by which we mean a quasi Jacobi form which does not contain the term E1, E1 being this A in Georg's lecture yesterday. This is the object which has rather bad properties as far as trans uh, transformation properties are concerned, but only contains pieces of E2 and otherwise is, quasar, is just a, a modular Jacobi form apart from E2. And then everything that comes from E1 is of the form total derivative of something that is again quasi modular Jacobi. So the um, appearance of E1 on four folds is well under control. That's the message. And just as an aside, one could say more here. Um, as a fun observation, this piece Xi dd Xi, which appears, is oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, given by the um, generating functional for Gromov-Fitlin variants of certain embedded threefolds inside this fourfold. But really, just as an aside, depending on the flux for suitable for suitable flux background after that minus one, the term psi dd psi can be written, in fact, as psi dd psi of the generating functional for the chromophyte invariance of an embedded threefold inside the fourfold, where y3 is a threefold inside y4, not necessarily Calabria. Um, I'm not going to say more about this now, unless you want to, you can ask me later if, you, if you're interested. This is something that one can see um, uh, directly from the definition of the gram of, um, of the gram of Whitman variance. And um, it explains also some um, of the structures of, of these elliptic genera that are then observed in concrete examples, but that just as an aside. So rather than dwelling on this more, let's now come to the application. Namely, well, if this was true for an, a, an arbitrary phase curve C beta and corresponding string, but as we had motivated, we are interested in the specific case where the base B3 admits a P1 vibration such that the associated string would be a heterotic string by itself. So application use this to understand the modular properties and then the weak gravity conjecture of um, the elliptic genus of a heterotic string. And importantly, these are non perturbative heterotic strings with 4D and equal one supersymmetry. And if we take as a special case now our base to be a P1 vibration, so our base B3 now admits the structure of a rational vibration with P1 fiber C0. And over this, we have our elliptic vibration, which degenerates over a certain curve sigma that lies somewhere in the space. F theory on such a base, note the elliptic vibration over the fiber C0 is a K3 fiber. So this is a K3 fiber at Y4. This is another way of saying it. This is a certain K3. And as is well known, of course, to all of you in string theory, F theory on a K3 vibration is dual to the heterotic string on an elliptic vibration over the same base. So this is F theory heterotic duality. F theory heterotic duality implies that F theory compactified on such fourfold is dual to the heterotic string fibered 
over a base B2. So here we have a hydrodic string theory on a threefold to four dimensions. Uh, we have F theory on a fourfold to four dimensions. And the heterotic string in the heterotic frame is nothing other than the D3 brain wrapping the fiber C0 on the F theory side. That's the usual heterotic F theory dictionary. So since this object, the elliptic, the, the heterotic string um, on the on the fourfold we can study, this means that we can also st make statements about um, the elliptic genus of heterotic theory on a dual um, Calabria tree. Is it the same T2, the same elliptic? It is the, essentially the same T2. So um, if one writes on the Weierstrass model, then there are the middle polynomial terms here in the stable degeneration limit, which govern the vibration of the elliptic, uh, elliptic fiber. Oh, is it non-perturbative? You mean the heterotic non-perturbative background, but the spin is perturbative. And now I come to now I come to the statement non-perturbative. Thank you. Non-perturbative now means the following. In general, it can happen that this P1 vibration degenerates in the sense that there could occur a curve gamma, let's call it gamma or whatever you want to call it, a curve on the base B2. This is B2. Over which the P1 fiber splits into two or several components. <laughs> This happens precisely when the curve C can be written as the sum, as the holomorphic sum of two factors, C01 plus C02. So let's call this C0. And this would be here C01, C02. Homologically, C0 is the sum of these two. And of course, this is just one example. It could be, this could be happening over various curves. This can be happening in a much more degenerate way. This is just a prototypical case. When this happens, the heterotic theory has in it an NS5 brain that wraps the same curve gamma on the base, on the same base B2, and it fills four dimensional space time. In that sense, we have here a heterotic theory including NS5 brains, and therefore this theory is non perturbative, it contains non perturbative objects. And the point is, that such a heterotic theory is perturbatively not under control. We do not know the world sheet theory of the heterotic thing associated with this background. But we can compute the elliptic genus in such cases via F theory heterotic duality. So conventional world sheet methods would fail, would not tell us much about the heterotic string here. But as long as we um, restrict ourselves to the elliptic genus, which is the partition function over a subset of states with signs. So it's two, um, two um, restrictions, only an index like partition function and only over a certain subset, they made those with periodic boundary conditions. Then we are in a topological sector where we can make statements, even though the heterotic string is not determined. In that sense, we can use this machinery to obtain information about that dual theory. So and here we have, have an counted, you know, If you had counted the states on the heterotic side very nicely, like forgetting non perturbative and just doing a Gaussian computation, we would have obtained a very different result. Well, we do not know a world sheet computation of what world sheet. So we are now taking the heterotic trigger on a color I mean, like without the NS5 brains. Even then, it's a color I mean, we would know if, if this were the toroidal orbifold. What do you mean? Hydraulic world sheet, we need, we might mean either toroidal orbifold, or we have some special Gebner type model that describe, describes a very specific background at very specific values of the modula. In full generality, we do not know what this, what this is. We have a, maybe, maybe we have a, G, a, a GLSM construction, but we do not know the conformal field theory to which this flows in the infrared of the GLSM. So we cannot do a perturbative computation. But we can compute the elliptic genus as an index via this duality. And let us now. Sorry. Yes. Does this mean in particular that the, the periodic bundle satisfies the reactivity with brain sources? Exactly. Okay. That's exactly what it means. Thank you. Very good. Which, of course, will have a statement, will, have, uh, will be important for what you are having in mind, your computation on the, on, on the hydraulic engine. So, the claim is, in fact, that these non perturbative sources on the heterotic side are precisely what is the origin of 
the milder of the two modular anomalies, namely the appearance of E2 in here. Namely, we call that now in general, the phi the C0 may split in, okay, let me write like this, phi the C0 may split into C01 plus C02. This would be a special case of what we wrote before as C beta equals sum, uh, well, is C beta one plus C beta two in our modular anomaly. Recall we had the modular anomaly <coughs> BE two F C zero or a general C beta was this minus one over 12 and then the elliptic genus over C beta one times I star C beta one over C beta two. Where we have here to sum over all classes C beta one plus C beta two being C beta. So when something like this happens, we get the anomaly with respect to E2. So the fact that here we have an E2 appearing has a very clear physical interpretation. The interpretation is that we have an NS5 frame on the hydraulic side. Now, what does it mean for there to be an NS5 frame? Here we see that it means the curve can split. So we consider the string obtained from wrapping the C0. Somewhere in moduli space, the curve, not in moduli space, but somewhere over the base in this vibration, the curve can split into two, meaning the string can split into two strings. The hydraulic string can here at threshold be written as the sum of two strings. These two strings are precisely what's known as E strings in six dimensions. The analog would be E strings in six dimensions. Now this is a four dimensional version of an E string. And if you're familiar with this hydraulic picture, this E string can be thought of as um, in, in, in the Hojava Witten picture, the M2 brain spanned between the NS5 brain and either of the two E8 walls. <laughs> so this non perturbative breaking of the hydraulic string into non critical E strings is precisely what is the source and interpretation of this E2. So this is associated with the um, splitting. Or with the statement that the hydraulic string is at threshold, which can happen over the base, and uh, uh, somewhere in the modulized space of this curve, if you, if you like, is at threshold with um, two E strings. And the two E strings obtained from a D3 brain on. C01 and C02 respectively. Okay. So if it's at threshold, it means that if I count the states from this heterotic string, I can just split in two and these are the states of the E string. Yes, exactly. Well, yes. So you have you have you have more to this. So, so you these, have two, to these two here, here. The, these two factors correspond to the um, elliptic genera of the two E strings. And they multiply and they give a factor, the factor multiplying E2 of the full hydraulic string. The full hydraulic string has more because the E strings are localized, but the full hydraulic string can also move away and seize moduli which are not visible to the E strings. Hence, does, the hydraulic string has more, more in it, but the part of the moduli that are due to these E string substitutes. They are accounted for by this. Then there will be also a tower for each E string? Yes, there is a tower for each okay. E string. Okay, fine. And this contributes to the full tower of the hydraulic string. Do you know, sir, can, can you just remind the self intersection of the two curves of C10, C20? These are curves on a threefold base, so they have no self intersection. In this case, I mean, I mean, three, I mean on a threefold okay, base. So it's if it were 60, in 60, they would have self intersection minus one. C0 has, would then have self intersection zero because it's a holomorphic fiber. And they would have self intersection minus one each and intersect and then this gives back to zero. Good. So this explains or gives an interpretation to this E2 anomaly. And this anomaly is also there if we had um, F theory to six dimensions on a Calabial threefold, as the, precisely the case that Laurent uh, asked about. So this is no news, but it's good to have in, in mind. Much more interesting is now the appearance of E1. The appearance of this E1 is associated with terms that come as total derivatives. 
And these occur only for the heterotic string in three dimension uh, uh, on color real threefold. And this is something that depends on the flux type, depending on the specific flux type. G alpha Z minus one. We can also have, we will also have terms proportional to E1. And these terms, these are precisely big psi, the big psi, pi minus two M. That can be written as E1 times something. Do you want, sorry, what does a threshold mean? That the string can move, the hydraulic string can move, and then once it hits the locus over this curve, it breaks up. So it's not dynamically forced to be a bound state or to break up, but I can move it back and forth. Okay, cool. Namely, if we recall the phenomenal equation, this was E E one F hydraulic string, etc. G alpha Z minus one. This was proportional to the chromophyton invariance of the same curve C zero. But for the flux given by pi star of D e dot D e alpha, where G alpha Z was dz dot this alpha d. And b was minus pi lower star dz dz. This is essentially the second brain world volume that gives rise to the u1, morally. So whenever this is non zero, we have a term proportional to u1. And this is a statement <laughs> about the type of gauge flux. It turns out, I'm just telling you now, in fact, when this is non-zero, then we have a D term potential for the 40 n equal one string on the dual heterotic side. So B dot pi star D alpha D non-zero, if and only if we have a D term potential induced by the heterotic uh, gauge bundle. The D-term potential that can vanish at certain points in the moduli space, it's a potential, but that generically is non-zero. And that is the source for a deviation from coarser modularity and is the origin of the appearance of this E1. And now, interestingly, Georg yesterday told, reminded us or told us how the elliptic genus on non colorial spaces depends on E1. It depends on E1 linearly, and the dependence is proportional to the first churn class of that space. The first churn class also breaks supersymmetry. And um, I think there is a, that the reason that there is a reason why. The D term here is also responsible for such an for such an E one term because it generically will also breaks the same. So that's something that would be interesting to understand so this, better. This will be related to to the holomorphic bundle mm -hmm. becoming non non polystable and non-stable <coughs> respect to the Keller class. Um, the uh, meaning that the slope is non-zero. The slope of the polystable oh, bundle. Yes, the time. bundle is still polystable, but it's of non-vanishing slope. Generically in moduli space, you can of course go to a locus in the Keller moduli space of the dual theory where the slope vanishes. But generically, the slope is non zero, and hence, generically, there is a SUSY breaking term. And the lesson seems to be that whenever you have such a generic SUSY breaking term, your modular properties change by a term linear in E1. That's just as an aside. So that's interesting to, to, to know. Okay, so the first application, therefore, was that we learned something about the structure of the elliptic genera of heterotic theories in such in general non perturbative backgrounds, including back gauge fluxes that lead to a, non, a slope non zero polystable bundle or that induce a D term potential in general. 
Second, we can also now explicitly compute the elliptic genera by making use of our knowledge of this, the general structure together with extra input via mirror symmetry. So to explicitly compute, if we want, the elliptic genus, one now makes an ansatz of the following type. Only one makes the ansatz that that elliptic genus in Q and uh, Xi. So this should be a quasi Jacobi form in general of weight minus one m, where this m is a number that can be read off from intersection theory from certain intersection numbers. And one makes the following ansatz. 1 over eta 24 of tau, eta the Dedekind function times phi 11m cube psi, where this is, or tau z, I mean, cube psi tau z, that's the manner like this, where phi 11m tau z is a foresight Jacobi form. of indicated weight 11 and same elliptic index m, whatever it is. And the one over eta 24, we call eta of tau is u to the one over 24 times this product n one minus q to the n. One over eta to the 24 gives rise to a term one over q. So that equals Q to the minus one times and then sum n and r and bigger zero r and z to n psi r. The q to the minus one from the eta is precisely the prefect of q e zero. E zero is the vacuum energy along the string. So there's a general formula for that and applied to the hydraulic string, it is precisely one or minus one rather. This is the vacuum energy along a hydraulic string that we know from textbook hydraulic string theory. So that is the Cardinal energy of the hydraulic, of the critical hydraulic string. And more generally, E0 was given by this E tau dot E0 in this case. And this indeed comes up at minus one for such a P1 set. Okay, we'll make such an ansatz. The reason for this ansatz first is to reproduce the expected q to the minus one that we expect from the general uh, uh, function. And it's also known from perturbative hydraulic string theory that the left moving bosonic partition function inside this elliptic genus. And this should give this equal to the 24. So um, it's justified to make this ansatz, but to be honest, it's an ansatz. And now for this phi 11m, that's the point. This is an element in this ring of course Jacobi forms. And this is generated by a finite number of, uh, has, has finitely many generators as a ring. <laughs> so um, we can now, uh, we, uh, now use that the ring of uh, Jacobi form, Corsa Jacobi forms, is generated by. E1, E2, and um, and those that generate the modular forms E4, E6, and then three more generators. Um, these also featured yesterday, various places, phi minus one tau z, z phi minus two one tau z, with a certain relation and phi zero two. So these two together form the Jacobi forms, generate the Jacobi forms, as we learned yesterday. Together with E2, they form these quasi modular Jacobi forms, which does not exist as a term. Jacobi forms, but in the physics literature, sometimes called like this. And with E1, they become the um, Jacobi forms. In any event, these are well-known forms whose expansion is known. So one can make now, depending on 
uh, the weight and the index make an ansatz over all possible polynomials, the sum over all monomials in these whose weight and index sums up to the desired phi 11m. And this gives a finitely finite number of terms, the higher m, the worse, of course, but finitely many for finite m. And then you can match the expansion in Q and Xi, the Fourier expansion, against known Gromov-Witten variants. So you need to compute a finite number of Gromov-Witten variants explicitly by mirror symmetry, and then match. And once you've done this, you have completely fixed the elliptic genus um, as, as such an expansion. And that's something that has been done in great detail in, on Calabria three folds, but it uh, um, can also be done on Calabria four folds. So when you list the last one, it should be 501, right? 501. And then I think. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Okay. It should be in this one. Good. Yes. And then yes. the first one should be E1 of Z, comma tau. Yes. 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 Thanks, sir. Thank you. Tau, Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Indeed. We need a, we need, yeah. Okay. okay. Can you say again what is this Kashmir uh, yield deterioration? How, how it relates to the formula of Z? Uh, of, uh, of, of the set of, of the elliptic genus. So, so we had said the elliptic genus had an expansion. So that was that, that was defined as the trace <laughs> minus one f q to the h q bar uh, h left h right side uh, uh, to the uh, q. Uh, right there. So this gives the energy levels at each energy level of the string. So at level n equals zero, oscillation number zero. We may still have a contribution to the Hamiltonian. That would be the energy value for the ground state, n equals zero. And that is defined, that is called Casimir energy. And um, in this, for the hydraulic string, it's minus one. That has to do with the fact that the string is uh, wrapped on a torus. So it's an object with a finite volume. And there, quantum mechanically, one has a ground state of zero, zero point energy. So this comes from the fact that if we look at the string excitations, we have for the left moving sector, HL, we would have certain energy values. And at n equals zero, we have a non-zero energy, namely given by E zero. And at n equal one, we are at energy zero and n equal two, so that would be n equal zero, n equal one, n equal two, et cetera. Good. So then by match by mirror symmetry with explicit invariance values for some gram of different invariance, you have to compute a few of them. One can fix and uniquely fix S minus N. That's what people call modular bootstrap. And they perfectionized this on three folds. And also be done. Okay, so I, I, I'm not giving examples now, but if you look into the papers, you can find many examples explicitly on corresponding methods. Good. However, the point is now finally, now we come back to what we actually wanted to do in the first lecture, namely to the gravity conjecture. For that end, we do not even need to do that step. We do not even need to make the explicit computation because the foresight Jacobi properties are already enough to um, verify the regularity condition. Now we come back to the last one. How are we doing this time? Half an hour. Okay, that's more than one. Okay, let me start from, from the back. So what we want, wanted in F theory, four dimensions, we want to check does there exist a sub lattice tower of states that is super extremal. Wanted a tower of states or if we are more ambitious, a sub lattice of charged states with the property to recall that q k squared 
Yangman squared over mk squared which is bigger than one over m plus squared, which is q squared over m squared of the extremal black holes in that theory. So our idea was to say, let's look at the tower of states from a string, and in fact, from a specific string, namely from the hydraulic string, which becomes asymptotically tensionless in the limit of g angles going to zero. We wanted to do this for in the limit, in the limit g angles going to zero. That is the limit where, unless we are only decompactly, only decompactifying our base develops must have such a p1 vibration where the fiber becomes small and the base becomes large so the limit g angle squared to zero was the limit volume of c0 to zero volume of the base and more precisely a section that of course to infinity for our base b3 of that type and we want to take this hydraulic string from the D3 on the C0 and its tower of states. For the other case, uh, it was just the KK mode. So the, the other case, meaning the decompatibility, there is no problem there, no? because it was the KK mode. Yeah, then it's KK. Okay, yeah, this has to be uh, discussed separately. Okay, I'm, I'm only looking at this. Case. So um, let us. So, so, so the idea was take the excitations from the, which turned out to be a heterotic, but who cares, from the heterotic string um, of D3 on C0. So what type of states would we need in order to marginally satisfy for an entire tower this inequality? So first of all, let's, so we want now to, let's write down what is GM mil squared, what is the masses of this potential states, what is the Planck scale, everything in geometric terms to see what type of states we need and then check if they are there. So um, if a state at level and K, the state of the such states at mass and K squared equals the tension of the string in some units, I'm using some units now, be consistent the tension of the string times nk minus one. This is the formula relates the mass squared and the excitation level of strings for a perturbative hydraulic string. And this formula is justified in the limit g angles to zero. Why? Because in that limit, the string becomes tensionless because vc zero goes to zero and hence also weakly coupled. So this formula is correct asymptotically. <laughs> so this is true asymptotically. As VC0 goes to zero, which is the same as G and mil squared goes to zero, which was the limit we wanted to look at anyway. Good. So that's the first thing. And T is the tension. <coughs> T is the tension of the string. And that's just with a factor of two pi, to be factor of two pi VC0. That's the tension of the string. Take a D3 brain, we wrap it, we get an object whose mass or tension, in this case, mass squared or tension is just set by the bar. So in this one, so you keep saying GM means, but you are now the U1, you are in the U1 case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm doing F theory okay. with the U1. Okay, okay. GM Mills is the G1. G1. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's just so. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's general. I mean, I'm, you can think of this as a Tan U1 or what? Okay, okay. So that G, that G. Okay. Great. And good. Next, G, what is this G, if I may keep using this notation GM Mills squared? This is set by the volume of. The seven brains, and I said this is precisely the volume of this device at B, this height pairing, which you can think of as the full cycle wrapped by the seven brains. This is the volume of B, where B was this height pairing, the device on which we can think of this as a device class wrapped on by the seven brains. It's not quite accurate. And finally, of course, in Planck squared, in string complications, is just set by the volume of the base. Or pi times the volume of the base. So if we plug everything in, then QK squared G and L squared over MK squared equals QK squared times, if I plug this in, I get um, 
one over Vb, Vc zero times nk minus one times a factor of one over four pi. And now let me write this as follows. I can write this now as pk squared over. So this is bigger or equal to. This is the same trick that was already done in the original weak gravity conjecture paper. This nk minus one comes from the vacuum energy. I ignore this, so then I get an inequality. I write now this as qk squared over four m nk. I ignore the minus one. I have four uh, m with this. Uh, and I write the 4m in the denominator. Now I'm having a factor of 2 pi somewhere, 8 pi, 8 pi. Very good. I write the 4m in the denominator, but get a 2m times volume B3 from the Planck scale. And there I have a VB times V0 <coughs> times 1 over m. Just added the spectrum to it. And M is what you have for the... And M is the index of the elliptic genus, which is given geometrically, that depends on the model. For M, M was computed as B dot um, C0, the curve C0. So that is a, a number, in fact, in 2Z, uh, one half, so in that one half is that. Um, that is an integer that depends that depends on the model, but everything else is completely general. And now, one notes that in the limit, in the infinite distance limit, where v c zero goes to zero. That precisely the infinite distance limit of weak coupling g and mill squared going to zero. The volume of the bay of the volume of b times volume c zero is precisely two m times volume b three. That follows from the Keller geometry of these infinite distance limits, which would be a topic by itself. You have that volume of b three is precisely one over two m times b b times b c zero. The logic being that, I hope I get the two B in the right place. Yes. The logic being that the um, VB contains the, the base of the fiber, of the vibration, of this vibration. So when the volume of the fiber becomes smaller, the volume of the base becomes large, the volume is essentially the product of base times fiber. And B, the seven brain, wraps or has a component along a section. Everything that is not along the section becomes irrelevant. It has a component along the section. Which component depends on the intersection number with C0? And that's precisely what's encoded in these two ends. So that's, that's the fact. So therefore, weak gravity conjecture is satisfied. Marginally, marginally satisfied. Or states with two k squared over four m n k equals to one. So if I have a tower of states, an infinite tower of states with this relation between the mass and the the charge and the excitation level in the hydraulic sense, then I'm done. So this is what we need to check. So the question is. Does such a does this elliptic genus contain states with this property of this charge to n relation? And this question can now be addressed in the remaining few minutes only with the help of modularity. So the modular experts will know this immediately. So in this, you are assuming that uh, the numerical factor in front is one uh, and in, in, the, well, in the weak gravity conjecture. Very good, very good. And it is one in the limit G angles to zero. One has to show this. One can show this in two ways. Either 
by looking at which particular black hole one has to consider here, the black hole would be a dilatonic black hole. So a uh, uh, Nord stream dilaton black hole and compute the charge mass ratio for this, and it will be precisely one. Equivalently, you can look at the repulsive force criterion, but you, you know, the, um, namely the regravity conjecture is equivalent to the statement that the gravitational attraction should always be balanced by repulsion. The Coulomb repulsion must always balance the attraction from gravity plus scalar interactions. There are scalar interactions because there's at least one dilaton um, in the game. That's the one. That's the one modulus that, um, that uh, along which we go to infinite distance. Uh -huh. And you can compute the repulsive force condition for those string states, and you get also get one. So in fact, this one is a one half plus one half. The first one half comes from the gravitational interaction. The second one half comes from the Yukawa interaction due to the dilaton. Again, asymptotically. As we go away from this limit, there are corrections to this. If I have one minute at the end, I will come to this. Okay, so with this motivation in mind, that, that was all. We just now need to look for those states. And for this one, invokes the well known um, theta function expansion that is known to all the uh, modular experts in here. So um, uh, to show this, to check. Use the theta function expansion of Jacobi forms. Theta expansion of Jacobi forms. And the buzzword here is Jacobi forms. It does not hold for quarter Jacobi forms, only for Jacobi forms of even and odd weight, namely of even or odd, even plus odd minus weight. And that's the following statement. If I take a Jacobi form, a Jacobi form of weight W index M of even or odd weight plus minus, then this is known to have an expansion in the following form L going from zero up to M minus one, HL of tau times theta. ML plus minus power Z, where these theta plus minus ML of power Z are theta ML plus plus minus theta M, uh, excuse me, are theta ML plus minus theta M minus L, and the theta mm -hmm. M. L are defined as the usual sum over Q and Xi. So theta and L are writable as sum K and Z. Q L plus two and K squared over 4m by l plus 2k. And the hls are certain vector value modular form of weight w minus one half, whose explicit form we do not need. But that's l, we don't need to go to m. L from zero to M. L is in Z mod M. Right? So right? Z mod two M. No, I'm taking because I'm taking here the minus L. I'm writing it in this way. Right? I take I take the one from with L and with minus L. So for the even ones, I could take L just going from minus from uh, in Z mod two M, and then I would have. Yeah, but you need to term is L equals to M in there, right? Um, that is the L equals zero term. So I'm, I'm, I'm. We can discuss it later, but yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think this is taken care of yeah. by, by, okay, yeah. by yeah, writing it in this way. Yeah. And the important point is for the even forms, it comes with a plus. For the odd forms, it comes with a minus. Yeah. And we need it for the odd guys. But first, let's do it for the even guys. 
Let's, let's first do it for the even words. So consider first. So and this looks looks already okay. Like such states could be could be read off from there, but we have to make sure. So such states can be read off if the term L equals zero <laughs> is there. Then we would have precisely the relation between the charge. This is the charge. And this would be the NK that we want. But for this, we need to argue for the term L equals zero to be actually present. And consider first the simpler case as, as, a, as a warm up. Uh, consider first the situation in 60 that we would have in 60, so F theory on Calabria threefold, that everything goes through just that now the elliptic index. The elliptic weight, the weight of the elliptic genus is not minus one, but minus two. So we would be in the even case in six elections. In 60, we would have, we would have that L tau M tau Z would be of weight minus two altogether at M. So this could be written as one over either 24 and then something phi 10 M. So that we get a minus two altogether. And this is an object that is plus, obviously. So the plus is conjugate. For some um, quasi modular Jacobi form phi 10 n. So an object that is Jacobi and also contains an E2. And the appearance of E2 doesn't spoil this property. The appearance of E1 spoils it, but not of E2. But that's not a problem. Okay, now in this case, we expect a term. So this should be q to the minus one times some nmr qn psi r. And we expect the term. We expect a term for n equals zero to be present because we need the, um, the uh, elliptic genus indeed to start with one over q because of, in order to reproduce the um, unphysical tachyon in the left, left moving sector of the hydraulic strain. So because this is a sum only of the left movers, the physical states come by pairing the left movers with the right movers. There's a tachyon in the left moving sector of the hydraulic string. This corresponds precisely to the term at n equals zero with, with mass minus one. It's unphysical because there's no right partner because the right partner is supersymmetric. So we have an unphysical tachyon, but this tachyon must show up in the elliptic genus because the elliptic genus doesn't know about, um, about GSO. So from these string theoretic arguments, one knows that the term n equals zero must be there. n equals zero and xi equals zero because the tachyon is uncharged. So we expect the term q0 psi0 zero to be present to reproduce the um, unphysical tachyonic ground state that is known to appear in six dimensional hydraulic strain. Q0 psi zero in the sum can only occur from L equals zero, from the L equals zero sum. So the L equals zero must be there. HL is, an, is a power series in Q. It can start with a one plus Q. It could also start with a zero plus Q. If it started with a zero plus Q, we wouldn't have this term. So it must start with a one plus Q times some number, some, some constant times uh, zero. Hence, there must be a term in a term of the form, or there must be terms of the following form, and h zero tau times the phi zero m plus tau z, that's because we have even weight h zero tau, this must look like non-zero constant plus all the q, this comes from the h, whatever it is, times then the first order terms here, or times then this, uh, this theta function, k in z 
um, q at l equals zero um, to m k squared over four m times psi two m k. So these terms must be there. They must be part of the elliptic genus, and they cannot be cancelled by anything else. So these terms are in the elliptic genus, and these are this is a tower of states. For every value of z of k, k and z, we have charges two m k. So we have a sub lattice of index two m k, whose um, q squared over four m precisely is n k because this is n k. So we have a sub lattice of states. With charges QK equals 2MK, K in Z, with the property that QK squared over 4M equals NK, because this is NK. I hope I didn't do it wrong. Good. So case closed. So that's why the uh, sort of the tower of states is there. Whenever the elliptic genus has even weight, that it was important here was that it has had even weight. So that we could use the I'm not sure I got why the need to restrict to n equals zero. Also for L difference from zero, then also it's from, going to work, no? Or but then, then we will also we will never have both here and here. A, uh, a a zero. This can this can never cancel. The L, L plus two m k because k goes from zero uh, because L goes from zero to m minus one. So we cannot cancel. But it's like you have states that is fine. The gravity just is not a sublattice then, or what? I'm confused. I mean, we would if we had a positive value of L, exactly. We would have a shifted shifted. Exactly, it's like a shifted tower. A shifted Still tower. a tower that is fine. Yes, so not a sublattice. Not a subject. Not a subject. Exactly. And this is so, okay. This was to practice for, for even weight. Now let's come to the actual case. So, this is in six dimensions. So, in six dimensions, top, the sub letters, sub letters in the gravity conjecture in 6D is therefore satisfied. And the lattice is at worst of coarseness 2M. So, there could be more states, but these are for sure there. And now let's now in the remaining four minutes very quickly now let's do the 4D n equal one case. So there we have odd weight. Now we know Z is minus one m so of the elliptic genus. The weight is now minus one because we are now in, 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 in four dimensions. So this can be written as pi minus eleven m so sigma. This is odd weight, so there's a minus here. 3 minus over 24 tau plus a term psi dd psi by minus 12 m. Uh, um, 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 <coughs> excuse me, what am I doing? Um, plus 11 minus 12 gives minus 1. Plus 10 minus 12 gives minus 2 and the psi dd psi. Where these are in general quasar modular Jacobi forms or Jacobi form and um, modular no, Jacobi forms up to appearance of E2. Now, this object, um, let, let, me, let me hurry up. This object does not contain, this object is odd under psi to one over psi or z to minus z. We can see this from the theta function expansion. One subtracts here, and this has an odd uh, behavior. So um, this is of the type q times psi plus one over psi, some number plus q squared, um, and so on. So on. Uh, psi minus one over psi plus higher order terms. So every to every psi we also have the term one over psi, but with, with the uh, with the minus. 
and the point is that we are computing the index. So the states at positive power of psi would have charge, say, one. The states at, ne at negative power of psi would have states minus one. And we are computing the index. So the index of states with charge one is minus the index of states with minus one. So that's why there's a minus sign. And that's why there, there cannot be a term of the type Q0 times psi to the zero, because this term will vanish. No terms. Zero, I zero appears. So that's why here we get at best a shifted sublattice. We could have terms not starting at L equal zero, but for example at L equal one. They will be there. They will give rise to su uh, to super extremal states, but this would be a shifted sublattice. So we get a tower, but it's only a shifted sublattice. However, if we want, so from that perspective, one could, if one didn't know about this term, we would say the, we cannot, we have no reason to prove the sublattice version of the regression. Note that this is just an index. It could still be that there is a sublattice, but we don't see it in our index because we don't know the full uh, partition function, but we are not in a perturbative situation. So we would, we would have to remain agnostic. But in general, there's this elliptic anomaly. So there's a psi dd psi of something with an even weight. For the even weight, exactly the same argument applies. The psi dd psi doesn't do anything. All it does is it brings down the powers of R in the front. So the same argument as before can be run. But the psi dd psi plus term gives by the same argument same type of subletters as before, as in 60. You can run through these arguments and see that the same can be done. So again, the, from this point of view, the weak gravity conjecture can be, uh, uh, one can uh, claim victory for a subletters of rank or coarseness, um, QK equals. Okay, so this closes the loop why the elliptic properties and in particular the holomorphic anomalies are important if you want to make quantitative statements about this gravity connection. This was all in the asymptotic limit G and moves to zero. Raphael already asked what about away from this. This is something one would like to understand. One can now compute corrections. One finds various corrections. Corrections, first of all, to the Geometry of the limit, then we, just, we needed this, the fact that the volume of the base times the volume of the fiber equals the volume of the full B3 in a certain limit. There will be corrections to this. There can be other prime corrections, other geometric corrections. And these essentially can translate into loop corrections from the hydraulic point of view, from the hydraulic gauge theory point of view, which would then lead to subleading effects um, also for the for the degree. Okay, I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, let me get to understand. So you have two terms in the partition function. So if it was just for the second term, this would be just a, a monophyle sublattice. Uh, yes, this gives this if this term is there, we know that we have a sublattice that satisfies. The okay, but then you have a sum of two terms. So in the end, uh, uh, there is there's just a shifted sublattice because of the first. Term. No, no, this is an addition. I mean, they, they cannot cancel. Ah, okay. They will. They cannot cancel each other. These are just extra terms. So we ah, have okay. we have the subletters, and we also have a sh shifted subletters. Ah, okay. So we have more, um, but this is the minimal subletters that for sure is there. Because there is no cancellation between. Yes, there, there is no cancellation yeah. between the okay. two. They, yeah. And on top of that, uh, in principle, you may have vector-like pairs. Absolutely, you can. On top of that, you may have vector-like pairs. <laughs> um, but for these, you need a perturbative. Only in a perturbative theory can you compute them. And in gener generality, that's, yeah, that's, that's not good. So we, this is very general at the price of only seeing this index like. And the reason is, I mean, th these are non-BPS states, right? We have 4D n equal one without, without BPS. So we have, to, we have to make, yeah, we have to, we have to give somewhere if we, if, we, if we have a situation with less control. Is, is there a particular instance of this construction where you don't have any NSI brains from the hydraulic side, or you always need that? No, we don't need that. If you don't have the hydraulic, 
And as five friends, you simply don't have an E2 term. That's it's part it's of so it's simpler. It's even simpler, yes. Yes. But the NS5 friends don't don't change the story much. The only thing that changes the story would be the slope condition for the for um uh, for the bundle, which is associated with this E term with the source of, of the back. And that's what's responsible for this. So you have this correlation condition no, with the bomb of the and the elliptic genus. To what extent the good gravity depends on that or the modular properties will all regardless of that, like you know. So Yes, so, so the, the at least this approach depends on uh, on us knowing or assuming that the modular properties of the of the Gromov written prepotential translate into the modular properties of the elliptic. That that depends on this on this statement. I could say a few more things. So one can one can make this assumption, and that one can match the physical spectrum. In, in F theory to the physical spectrum at the masses level that one gets via this assumption on the dual heterotic side and they match completely. So th there are non trivial checks on the fact that this conjecture, so to speak, or that this relation holds also, um, also in form. That relation is more general because it's yes. beyond the modular properties. Yes. It's, it's more general and it's also not only um, for, for the specific. So you cannot say necessarily that because I mean that the weak gravity, you can use the weak gravity as an argument for that correlation to work in full generality. Like you can use it to argue for the modular process, yeah. but not yeah. So I, I to come back to this discussion we had yesterday, I would trust more in the statement <laughs> that this is given by the Kumarvit invariant than I would trust in the weak gravity conjecture. That's why I would use this this assumption to gain information about the gravity conjecture, not the other way around. But that's the perspective from a, from a string theory. Can I ask a naive question? So um, I, I don't understand the physics side, but is it true that in some sense you're proving that the Fourier coefficients of the Jacobi forms only are non-zero in a certain way? Yes. The, uh, and uh, this is kind of translates yeah. to proving this weak form. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So one has a, in, in precise, um, I mean, similar arguments are also can, can also be made when, when, when um, in, the, in the context of studying black holes, for example, by by, uh, by, by modular objects. So one one has to show that if one here uh, draws Q squared and there M squared, so this would be Q squared equals M squared. This would be the weak gravity line. One ha one has to argue that there are certain states here that asymptotically approach this line in a in a certain sense. And, and everything else will be populated. <clears throat> so these are precisely this parabola. If I write a Q in the, I'm writing Q squared. If I, this would be precisely this parabola. <coughs> that, uh, ah, so you need to argue non-existence. Existence. Or? I need to uh, argue ex of existence for those states. Ah, so you need to show that certain Fourier coefficients are exist non are non-zero. Are non-zero. Ah. Oh, did you say zero? Yeah. Zero. No, no, I need I need them to be non-zero for, for, for certain. And how, how does it change for the case of the T4 vibration instead of the K3, like the stream from type 2? Very good. So T4, okay. Well, there. Um, there, one would not be in the situation that the seven brain intersects a heterotic string curve. So that proof cannot be done in, the, in, in such cases. Yeah, so, so the, the, the proof works when we are in, in, in those particular types of limits. The, the other limits, however, are decompactification limits. But the type of string is not decompactification. Oh, type, type. Yeah, I mean, when you have the T4 fibrations, that's the. Well, so you do type two, string, type, type, type two, type two A. You do type two yeah, A. Type okay, two. then you do 4 and equal two. That's a completely different setup, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so there, there your U1s would be your Raman Raman yeah. U1s. And there, the KK states will be the BPS states that will satisfy your weak gravity conjecture. The, I mean, the uh, KK states. But I mean, I mean we light. have two types of string perturbative limits. No, one you recover the heterotic string. Yeah. And the other one you recover the type two string, depending if it was a K three or a T four. Yes, but that's in type two. That's yeah, yeah. That's four D and equal two. Yes. And and there the U ones are closed string U ones. Yes. And there, I think when Okay. We'll, we'll be able to argue via the BPS states, like, like what's done yeah, also yeah. in, in 
Okay. So, okay, thank you. Let's see.